Well, Lavlina making India proud there, a real winner. Despite the color of her medal and the biggest celebrations are in her village. The big news is, of course, that now the medal winner is getting a new road to her village. <laughs> It is not Bihu, but people of Barpathar in Assam's Golaghat district are in a festive mood. Singing and dancing to celebrate 23-year-old Lovelina Borgohai, winning a bronze, the first ever Olympic medal for the state. At Lovelina's home in Baramukhia, her father shares the story of how his wife enrolled their three daughters to train for self-defense. Prashant Das, who taught the then 12-year-old Mua Thai and kickboxing, says she had won her first boxing medal without any formal training. Lovelina is going to Olympic in our country, who is participating in the Olympics, is a very good thing for us. Lovelina's village that so far had a muddy road, inaccessible during rains, is now getting a motorable road thanks to its new Olympic star. लाभनीना एक नाम नहीं है अभी आदर्श हो चुका है नव नव प्रधान में यहाँ से पीठ हो के मतलब यहाँ इस जगह से और भी उभर के आएंगे वो हम हम हमारे विश्वास से There are freshly laid gravels on this road what used to be a muddy road which Lovelina Borgohai used to take every day she used to cycle on this road kilometers to reach her nearest training center her story is a fascinating tale of struggle, but it would inspire many like her in the remote and rural areas to chase their dreams of medal and glory. From Boromukhya village, with camera person Sanjay Chakravarti, Ratandeep Chaudhary for Indy TV. And a valiant Indian women's hockey team went down to Argentina in the semi-finals. They will, however, play for bronze now. The gutsy team, which has made history by being the first Indian women's hockey team to reach the semis, fell to a narrow 1-2 defeat against Argentina. India will now face Great Britain in the bronze medal game. The Prime Minister, however, spoke to the captain, Rani Rampal, and the coach and congratulated them for their brilliant performance to reach the semi-finals, as did many, many others, all wishing them the best at their amazing journey. But as our amazing young Indian women are making us all proud at Tokyo, look at how we are treating India's daughters right here in the Indian capital. There's still grief, mourning, outrage at the fact that a nine-year-old little girl was allegedly gang raped, murdered and then hurriedly cremated by a priest and his accomplices right in front of her mother who was begging the priest to let her take the body of her daughter home. He told her to keep silent, not cry and go away. However, the family reached there just as the girl is being cremated. All that's left of her body are her feet and ashes. Today, politicians, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal and Congress leader Rahul Gandhi visited the family and have asked that they must get justice. A small rented room less than 50 square meters in southwest Delhi has become the center of a media storm. This is where a nine-year-old girl lived, played and helped her parents with chores. She was sent by her mother to collect water from the water cooler at the nearby crematorium. Both her parents are scrap collectors. They rely on meager earnings by begging at the nearby dargah and could not afford to send their only daughter to school. They had been trying to save up for her birthday coming up in December. Her devastated mother told NDTV how she went looking for her daughter that Sunday evening when she didn't return for over an hour. The priest, 55-year-old Radhe Shyam, forcibly burned her daughter's body in front of her eyes. She was the only one to see the victim's body. She was coming to the temple, she put the gate on the gate, and she put the gate on the gate, and she put the gate on the gate. So our voice didn't give us a letter. It was completely mulam, hand, pair. और इसके होट थोड़े काले पड़ रहे थे हाथ में थोड़ा यहाँ निशान था एक हाथ में खुरसाट आ रही थी खाल सी उपट गई थी आज इनको कोई घटना हो जाए तो 
आप मेरे बच्ची का न्याय चाहिए मुझे न्याय जल्लादों को फांसी लगनी चाहिए एक कमरा में मैं बंद कर दी थी एक में एक कर दिए थे जैसे आए थे दो पुलिस वाले ऐसे ठाड़े दो पुलिस वाले ऐसे ठाड़ी थी इनमें लाते लात बजाए थी मेरे को आंख लिखा रहा मुझ पे दबाव डाल रहा वॉज अराउंड वन थर्टी एम एट द नाइट एट दैट टाइम वी कुड गेट द मदर वी ब्रॉट हर टू पुलिस स्टेशन एंड वी गॉट काउंसलर ऑल्सो इन फ्रंट ऑफ हर हर स्टेटमेंट वॉज रिकॉर्डेड इट इज़ नॉट दैट वी वी कैप डेम इलीगली और समथिंग लाइक दैट इट वॉज जस्ट procedural we had to do it okay. uh, you are calling it next day but actually it was the same day okay she saying five but i don't know I, you uh, you can ask her the police have charged the priest radesh yam and three crematorium workers with rape and murder under the child protection act and the scheduled caste atrocities act congress leader rahul gandhi and delhi chief minister arvind kejriwal came to meet the family today the delhi government has promised the family a compensation of 10 lakhs The media and political attention around this case has become overwhelming for the victims family who are inconsolable. They want capital punishment for all of the accused. With Sanjay Kaushik, Meher Pandey for NDTV. A 55-year-old man who gang raped a 9-year-old girl, a family who was saving, they didn't have the money to send their only daughter to school. Now they get 10 lakhs compensation when the little girl is gone. Moving on now let's look at covid data well again the cases are rising we had over 42625 cases that's a rise of over 39.5% the deaths also up 562 the recovery rate currently at 97.37 the daily positivity rate at 2.31% the vaccinations as of 6 o'clock are only over 34 lakhs so we need to really speed up the vaccinations but despite kerala having the highest number of cases the kerala is uh, government is relaxing lockdown curbs now shops will be allowed to operate 6 days in a week and this will start from august the 15th and 22nd when they were closed earlier the health minister urged shops and business establishments to make special arrangements to avoid a rush at that time but as we can see numbers rising then is this the time for lockdown curbs to be relaxed Well let's look at the headlines coming out of parliament first with this verbal spat which happened right outside parliament where a kali mp harsimrit kaur has been leading protest with posters today congress mp ravneet pittu stopped and took her on over farm laws <laughs> well pretty un parliamentary behavior at parliament also six tinumul congress mps have been ordered to leave the rajya sabha over grossly disorderly conduct after they entered the well of the house displaying placards while protesting over the pegasus scandal the rajya sabha mps also in tinumul but the opposition parties of 14 uh, parties that met yesterday have all condemned this and said they will protest till the mp suspensions are revoked the opposition leaders 14 opposition parties have also issued a joint statement urging the government to stop sending misinformation to discuss pegasus and then the new farm laws a major constitutional amendment bill has now been cleared by the cabinet meaning that the states can now draw up their own obc list this basically uh, goes against the supreme court order which had said that the which castes or obcs can only be decided by the central list now states and uts can decide their own list and this basically the first beneficiary be maharashtra which has pushed to include the politically powerful maratha caste as obc so that they can get reservation so there will be an immediate political impact there Well Karnataka has a new chief minister and now new cabinet interesting bits there was well caste balancing equations no deputy chief minister and also ex chief minister son Yedurappa's son is not in this cabinet ಬೇಸವಿಲ್ಲದೆ ರಾಜ್ಯದ ಮಂತ್ರಿಯಾಗಿ ನ್ಯಾಯವಾದದನ್ನೇ ಮಾಡುತ್ತೇನೆ ಎಂದು ಭಾರತ ಸಂವಿಧಾನದ ವಿಷಯದಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಜವಾದ Karnataka's new chief minister Basavaraj Bommai did not have to wait as long to get in some cabinet colleagues as his predecessor BS Yedurappa did back in 2019 nano basaraj bombay instead a week after bombay took over 
After consultation with the BJP High Command, 28 new ministers were sworn in, leaving four slots vacant. The selection seems to balance caste and regional equations. Former Deputy Chief Ministers Dr. Ashwat Narayan and Govind Karjol are back. The third Deputy Chief Minister under Yedurapa, Lakshman Sawadi, is out. Other seniors missing are Suresh Kumar and former Chief Minister Jagadish Shetter, who had already said he could not serve under Bombay as he was senior to the current CM. Sometime Yedurapa detractor K.S. Ishwarapa is a minister again. As are Ara Shok, Dr. K. Sudhakar, B. Sri Ramulu and Murugesh Nirani. Wealthy MLC and former congressman MTB Nagaraj has entered the cabinet. Yedurapa's son, Vijendra, has not. The party will hope this selection will not see rumblings of discontent, so often the case after any cabinet expansion. With DM Kumar, Maya Sharma in Bengaluru for NDTV. And yet another day of record highs at the stock markets led by the financial and metal sector as the blue chip Nifty 50 index broke above the key psychological 16,000 level. So that brought in fresh impetus. So we can see there the Sensex up by over 1%, the Nifty up as well there. And meanwhile, Kumaramangalam Bidla has stepped down as the non-executive chairman of Vodafone Idea. This comes just after he had actually written a letter to the government in which he offered to hand over his stake in Vodafone Idea to any public sector entity. So far, there's been no response from the government, but the shares of buy have tumbled over 16% already. Well, a new Parliamentary Standing Committee report has said that there's been a major job loss impact because of COVID. Let's just look at what that actually means on the ground. So in Kolkata, there's now even huge lines for the post of a morgue assistant. Sharnali has a BA degree in history. Husband Vibha Broto passed high school. On Sunday, both took an exam for the same government job of lab assistant at a state hospital in Kolkata. The fine print in the admit card says the job is that of a morgue assistant. But they don't care. She lives in fear of losing her job at a private firm struggling in the pandemic. He drives a motorcycle for a taxi aggregator and dreads losing income as he did during lockdowns. They want secure government jobs to survive. If it means handling dead bodies, so be it. <laughs> Jobs are so scarce. This couple was among 2,100 applicants for six vacancies. Some reports claim the applicants actually numbered 8,000. The candidates needed to be class 8 pass, but postgraduates and graduates were among 284 who finally took the exam. Salary? 15,000 rupees. Sharnali's mother is praying either her daughter or Devabrato gets the job. The young couple supports their respective parents and their young daughter. For the living to survive, in hard times, no problem dealing with the dead. With Jiti Shankar, Monideepa Banerjee, NDTV. So as stock markets boom, here's the reality for millions of people around the country. Meanwhile, moving to floods and landslides, the extreme weather events in August, at least 14 people have died, almost 3 lakh displaced from their homes in floods in southern Bengal because of heavy rains, as well as the release of water from dams and the state's border with Charkhand. Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee is doing an aerial survey, but also as you can see in uh, Madhya Pradesh, also devastation because of heavy rain. And in Rajasthan, in Kota, again, 
harrowing visuals of devastation caused by excess rain. And also in Himachal Pradesh, the worry about landslides. We saw just the other day a uh, road being destroyed. And here you can see this landslide here as well in Himachal Pradesh. So any travelers and tourists need to be extremely, extremely careful of driving on Himachal Road at this point. And as we end tonight, this very important story about the bravery of a young girl, Venetia. She's in class 10 and she's a topper, but that's not what's so brave and special about her. What's absolutely wonderful is that Venetia has done this despite losing both her parents in May because of COVID. She says that these results are a tribute to their memory. I'll be a strong girl daddy without you. With a heavy heart, I bid you goodbye. Free you left me all alone to cry. Now every tear fetches a memory of yours, but I hold it back and don't let it flow. I'll be a strong girl daddy without you. Vanisha scored a perfect 100 in English, Sanskrit, Science and Social Science and 97 in Maths in class 10. But two months back, there was complete darkness before her as she lost both her parents. But she said when she looked at her younger brother, age 10, and realized she was all he had. My brother, obviously, and my parents, their dreams that kept me motivating throughout these two months and will keep and will motivate me throughout my life. He is the biggest source of motivation for me right now. Mm -hmm. And seeing him like that, that uh, he... Oh, that no, it's not, no, it's not, no, it's not, no, it's not. I don't want you to cry. Take a bit. That I am all he has. So uh, that is all that keeps me motivating. Her father, Jitendra Kumar Pathak, was a financial advisor and mother, Dr. Seema Pathak, was a government school teacher. Last time she saw them alive was when they left for hospital together. Vanisha willed herself to go from grief to acceptance to fight back and crack the UPSC. The last call of my mother, she said that uh, she she said that uh, just believe in yourself and we'll be back home very soon. And the last words of my father that I remember, ki beta himmat rakna, hum dono jaldi ghar wapas a jayenge. Uh, seeing me and IITN was a dream of my father, and seeing me becoming an IAS officer was a dream of my mother. So I need to fulfill both of their dreams. So, so you will also score 99.8? More than that. A perfect 100. Perfect 100. I have seen some poetry in that you have written. To live your dreams, I shall rise up on my own. And all I can say that we all have our blessings with you, Anish. Our sincerest condolences to Vanisha and her young brother. And what a brilliant, brave, confident young girl she is. Her parents would be so, so proud of her.